Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is a follow-up to the Copper Wire teaser video I made about three weeks ago, and since then I've really updated the pack and it's ready for an official 1.0 release. But before I get into it, I just want to thank everyone for the support. I didn't expect the video to blow up the way it did, and the comments have meant a lot, and it has given me sort of a justification to put all the hours I have into updating it. But I think this data pack is really good, and I'm excited for you guys to try it out. So this data pack aims to sort of add to redstone and make it more practical in a lot of ways that redstone is limited in. So before we show off what it can do, we've got to understand the lightning rod, which in the game currently doesn't really do much. It attracts lightning, it deoxidizes copper, and it powers redstone. As you can see. The problem being, that's about it. So the first thing I did is I made them be able to chain together in wiring, which I'm going to call these copper wires from now on because that's what the data pack is made around. As you can see, when lightning strikes, it sort of cascades down. And if you were counting, this is actually 16 blocks, not the 15 that redstone is limited at. And that's because the first cool thing about these is that they can go an unlimited distance. Now this is cool and all, but lightning is still a very impractical source of power. I mean, it depends on the biome, it depends on the weather, and it just has to happen to strike a copper wire. So the next thing I did was I made this able to be powered by any redstone source using the copper bulb. The copper bulb is sort of an output that redstone power will go into and you can use a chain as a transformer. So when you turn this on, the chain sparks to let you know there's power going through it and the copper wires will power. And as you can see, this one at the end, because there's no block it's going to, will actually spark to let you know that there's power going through. And as a matter of fact, these do damage you in survival as well as any mobs, so you can use them for cool traps and stuff. As another note before I move on, the light state of a copper bulb does not matter, just the power state, so the little redstone signal right there. So the question is, why would you use this over redstone? Well, apart from its unlimited range, you can also do cool things due to it being directional, such as having parallel power lines that don't affect each other. Obviously, with redstone, they would just kind of conglomerate into a big mess, but here they are completely separate, and that's because these are directional, so if I were to place one backwards, power wouldn't go through, it has to all face the same direction. But with that, we can do other cool things like having signals that go different directions parallel to each other. And another thing I've added into this data pack that redstone can't do is actually have these intersect at the same block. I've repurposed the chiseled copper as sort of a pass-through block. And as you can see, these are completely separated. They don't interact even though they're occupying the same block. So all of these copper wiring sort of electrical signals are completely separate, and this can have up to three different signals going through it, obviously for the three axes, and it works with any direction as long as the input and output are facing the same way. Now that's cool and all, but you can't really change the direction with this, so how do you? Well, the first way is through another copper bulb, which just simply powers more of these with redstone, and this can allow you to split and duplicate the signal as you see fit. But a more refined way to do this, and less expensive, is through using the copper grate, which has become sort of a power split device. And this allows power to go in, and if you have more inputs than outputs, you'll actually see particles, and the more inputs you have, the more particles you'll see. But it also allows you to redirect a signal to any direction, as you can see. And in case you have more outputs than inputs, it won't work. So as you can see, we've got one input and two outputs, and it's not going through. But if we power this side over here, then we can actually have two inputs and two outputs. And as soon as we have a third one, as you can see, it also does not work. So what are some other ways we can manipulate this block? Well, over here, we're actually using yet another block of repurpose, which is the heavy core, and it has become sort of a capacitor. Now by itself, in this case, it doesn't really do anything. But if we ever have a mismatch in the number of inputs and outputs, I'll show you one more input than output, it'll actually charge like a battery. And you can see that charge level right here. And it will charge faster based on the number of inputs going into it. And in the case where you have no inputs or less than outputs, you can actually discharge it and you'll see little particles here letting you know that it's discharging. And the more outputs you have, the faster it'll discharge. And in case it ends on a number that's less than the amount of outputs, you can actually break a couple and then the remaining power will send through when it's able to. And this doesn't just work for the copper grates, it also works for the chiseled copper over here as long as the signal is going straight up. As you can see, it charges just fine, and when you want it to discharge, you just simply place it down like that. And with the copper wire itself, you can also do the exact same thing. It just goes up to charge and down to discharge. 
So this allows for some convenient energy storage. Another way we can store energy is through a closed loop like this. And the reason why I have the piston here is because if we quickly flick this lever on and off, we can actually have a zero tick piston and zero tick redstone power using these things because they can activate and deactivate much faster than redstone. And now I've created an engine. And honestly, if we just get rid of the pistons, I could just stare at this all day. I really like how this looks. And as another example of what we could do, this kind of looks like what you'd see on like a printed circuit board. You can kind of just send independent signals and light independent things. Personally, I think it's really cool and I'm excited to see what people can do with this to make uh, really cool redstone computers that are a lot more compact and a lot more computery looking than the current redstone computers. And in case you were wondering, pistons work just fine with this. However, it's important to note that when you use capacitors, there'll be a bit of a um, charge level cannibalism. As you can see, this first one's charging, but as soon as we flick this lever, it'll, it'll send over to the block that it got pushed over, which is fine. But if you do it again, it'll sort of like have this one eat the score and then that one will start over. And it only works with two. It doesn't work in a line with three or more I've tried. Um, but if you flick this lever again, yeah, you got some data loss there. It sort of just cannibalized. So best solution you have is just don't put these next to each other. There's no reason to. And if you do, you might lose some power. And one more thing I want to mention about this data pack is that all of this will work underwater perfectly fine. It just works completely normally. So you can use these as underwater power lines if you so choose. And that's what I've got for you so far in the 1.0 release. Obviously, it's pretty basic, it's pretty simple, but I think the few blocks that work with this are going to revolutionize how redstone and power works in the game. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this little introductory video. And if you want to give the data pack a try, you can download it at Planet Minecraft or Modrinth or really anywhere you want. It'll be posted in the description. And go ahead, give it a download, let me know what you think. And if you come up with anything that's really cool, I might feature it in the download page, who knows? Anyway, so go ahead and give it a download and let me know what you think. If you come up with any cool features you want this to have, feel free to let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.